What we're looking at is a simple solar collector. It's being used to warm water. We've got cool water entering the solar collector and warm water leaving it. If we look at the interior of it, we see that the pipe snakes back and forth throughout the collector, collecting as much solar energy as we can. We're going to neglect any heat losses from the sides and the bottom of this collector. So we're really just going to focus on the top of the collector and see how much sunlight is being absorbed. So to do that, let's take a look at our solar collector from the side. Here I've provided relevant temperatures, the temperature of the sun, the temperature of the sky above, ambient temperature in the local vicinity of the plate, and the surface temperature of the plate itself. The area of the plate, the plate has dimensions of one meter by one meter, so the area is one square meter. So the primary means at which the plate gathers energy is from the sun itself. So there's some solar insulation, G, and only a fraction of that radiation actually is absorbed by the plate. So to account for that, we're going to multiply by the plate's absorptivity. In doing so, we can now neglect the amount of reflected radiation because it's all being accounted for in alpha. You might incorrectly assume that g is equal to sigma times the temperature of the sun to the fourth power, and in doing so, you would predict that the plate receives 63 megawatts of energy per square meter. Of course, we're not at the surface of the sun. That's what this meter squared represents, meter squared of the surface of the sun. If we were, of course, we would burn our plate up. So that is not a reasonable value for the amount of irradiation from the sun. Because we're so far away from the sun, the more reasonable value is 900 watts per square meter. Multiply that by the area, we find that the sun shines about 900 watts of energy on the surface of the plate. We also have irradiation from the sky, and the sky is relatively cool. We can represent that as the absorptivity multiplied by sigma times t sky to the fourth power. We also have energy loss in the form of diffuse radiation from the surface of the plate. It means the radiation comes off uniformly in all directions from the plate. So to calculate this, we'll say the emissivity of the plate multiplied by sigma times the surface temperature to the fourth power. We've also got natural convection coming off the surface of the plate. Using an appropriate correlation for natural convection from a plate, we find that h bar is about equal to 4.7 watts per square meter cal. So we find out the amount of energy being transferred from the water is due to irradiation from both the sky and the sun, minus the loss due to natural convection and radiation out into the surroundings. If we were to assume that the surface was perfectly black, we would find that the absorptivity and the emissivity were all equal to 1, and now it becomes a matter of plugging in numbers to find the solution. However, to complicate matters, it turns out the surface is not black, and in fact, the values of alpha, these two values, are not the same. So I'm going to call one, I'll call this alpha sky, and this we'll call alpha sun. And we'll find out in a second why they aren't the same and how we go about calculating them. To be able to do that, we first have to talk about what it means for a surface to be black or gray or semi-gray. Here what I'm uh, showing are the spectral emissivity and the spectral absorptivity for the three types of surfaces. And due to Kirchhoff's law, we find that the spectral emissivity and the spectral absorptivity will be equal in all cases because the radiation is diffuse. What I'm showing at the top is what's known as a black surface, which means it absorbs 100% of the radiation for all values of lambda, for all wavelengths of radiation. The second surface I'm showing is known as a gray surface, and the value of epsilon and alpha are the same value for all values of lambda. And they're less than 100%. But the idea behind a gray surface is that epsilon and alpha are the same for all wavelengths. And in the third case, I'm showing what's known as a semi-gray surface. Again, the value of epsilon and alpha, and in this case, the spectral emissivity and the spectral absorptivity are different values for different wavelengths. We're going to say that there's a step change, either downward or upward, at some critical value of lambda. We'll call that some value lambda critical. And in this case, I've set lambda critical equal to 5 microns. And I've said the spectral emissivity and the spectral absorptivity are equal to 0.9 at short wavelengths and equal to 0.1 at longer wavelengths. Recall that if the surface was black, we could have completed the problem by now because we would have set epsilon and alpha equal to 1 in all cases. If the surface was gray, we could have simply set epsilon and alpha equal to 0.6 in all cases. However, the surface we're dealing with here is semi-gray, so the question becomes, well, what is epsilon itself, or what is alpha 
itself because the wavelengths from the sun tend to be uh, very short and the wavelengths of the emitting surface tend to be longer because the temperature of the surface of course is much cooler than the surface of the sun. What I'm showing here is a simulation of a gray surface in which the spectral emissivity and the spectral absorptivity are equal to 0.6 for all values of lambda. And I'm keeping the temperature right now at the temperature of the sun. We see most of the energy occurs at, at short wavelengths. However, if we, take the, uh, if we take the surface and cool it down, we see a shift for, to higher and higher wavelengths. Now, something I want you to pay attention to is the fact that I am scaling the vertical axis. Remember, it's scaling by orders of magnitude as we decrease the temperature. So if we move from right to left, the temperature increases, the energy increases by orders of magnitude. What you're looking at, the gray curve represents the emission if this was a black body, and the red curve represents the case in which we have a gray surface in which I've set the emissivity equal to 60% across the board. For all temperatures, what that's saying is that the area under the red curve is exactly 60% of the area under the gray curve. This next simulation shows what would occur if the surface was black. We would find that the area under the red curve is exactly equal to the area under the gray curve because the surface is black. So in this case, epsilon and alpha are equal to 100% no matter what the temperature is. Even for the cool temperature of the plate, it's equal to 1, and the temperature of the sun, it's also equal to 1. For the case of the semi-gray surface, however, we find that the area of the red curve is 90% of the area of the gray curve at short wavelength. What we find is that as we decrease the temperature, the fraction of radiation being emitted or being absorbed above 5 microns is substantially less. So we find to the right of that critical value of lambda, the actual radiative power is only 10% of that of the black body. And to the left, it's only 90%. So we have to figure out what value of epsilon and what value of alpha to use. And I've indicated that on the title on the bottom. So what we find, if we increase the temperature back up to the temperature of the sun, we see epsilon and alpha are about equal to 90%, almost equal to 90%. Very little of the radiation coming from the sun has wavelengths longer than 5 microns. As we cool it down though, we're going to continue cooling this down. Pay attention to epsilon and alpha. It's now at 68% at a temperature of 889 degrees C. We're going to continue cooling this down until we hit the temperature of the plate, which is at a temperature of 45 degrees C. So pay attention to epsilon and alpha and they're 0.12 at this temperature. The temperature of the sky, recall, is equal to minus 10 degrees C, very cold in the sky. And we now see epsilon and alpha are almost equal to 0.1. In fact, of two significant figures, they are equal to 0.1. And the reason it's close is because we only see that small amount of radiation that has wavelengths shorter than 5 microns. If we were to continue to go even colder than that, we would find that little or no radiation occurs at wavelengths shorter than 5 microns. So at this temperature, it would be safe to say that we were dealing with a gray surface because the step change in the spectral emissivity doesn't affect it. So we'll, we'll go back, we'll heat this back up again, we'll find the emissivity and the absorptivity are approaching 90% at the temperature of the sun. So these are the values that we want to use. So for the temperature of the sun, we'd say uh, alpha sun was equal to 0.89 for the surface temperature of 45 degrees. We'll use epsilon equal to 0.12, and for the sky, we're going to use an absorptivity of 10%. So those are the numbers we're going to plug in to figure out the heat being delivered to the water. The question becomes, how did I go about calculating those values? So we'll look into that. So we'll first note that the red, the area under the red curve is the actual emissive power. The area under the gray curve is equal to the black body emissive power, which is equal to sigma times t to the fourth. And the ratio of those two, E divided by sigma t to the fourth, is equal to the value of epsilon that we're going to use. And in this case, I've got the temperature of 45 degrees for the surface. Formally, we'd write this, the value of E as being the integral of the red curve, which isn't necessarily easy to integrate. So what I did was split it into two parts. I've got a part with epsilon 1, which we've got is 90%, and epsilon 2, which is equal to 10%. And the fact that those are constants means that I can pull these out of both of those integrals. So here I've rearranged those and solved for the value of epsilon that we wish to use. Epsilon 1 and 2 we know, 
Now the tricky part is evaluating these integrals because we need to evaluate the integral of this function which isn't easy to do. There's no analytical expression for it. So what I did in my simulations was I used an ODE solver in MATLAB. Alternatively, we can recognize that this represents the fraction of the black body emissive power that occurs below our critical value of lambda. And the term on the right represents the fraction of the black body emissive power that occurs above the critical value of lambda. And here I've represented the first integral as a fraction that is tabulated. You could look that up. And the second integral is 1 minus the original fraction, which we could look up. In doing so, we'll find, and because we know the temperature of the solar collector is equal to 45 degrees, we can find that its emissivity is equal to 0.12. To go back to the original problem, we find that alpha sky is about equal to 0.104. We find that alpha sun, because its wavelengths were so short, we find that that value is equal to 0.896. And we find the emissivity from the solar collector was equal to 0.115. Plugging in all of these numbers, we find that the amount of heat added to the water is about equal to 650 watts. Note that 900 watts of solar energy is being delivered to the surface, so we could find an efficiency of 650 divided by 900, which is equal to 72%. So 72% of the sunlight is being delivered to the water.